Okay, today we're going to talk about bricks. Um, yes, several of my audience keep reminding me to talk about bricks in one of my videos, and yeah, I make 60 videos in my channel and I didn't really talk about or mention bricks at all. I think judging by my subscribers, my channel have audience that are often anti-US, anti-West, and more pro-China, pro-global South. And thanks to YouTube statistic, which shows me exactly what channel my audience love to watch. So I know you guys have been watching those videos about bricks just shock the world, okay? And the US dollar will be collapsing and all those things. I guess you guys expect me to cheerleading for bricks as well and say something good about bricks. <laughs> well, you guys are up for a massive disappointment, I think. Okay, first of all, among Chinese intellectuals, uh, we do not talk about BRICS that much. It's a political sensitive subject. Um, any economist or geopolitical analyst I know that speaks Mandarin that have my attention and my respect, they are all very conservative uh, regarding topics of BRICS and sometimes outright ignore BRICS topics completely. Because if you say something negative about BRICS, the Western media will pick up and start spreading it, right? You know, you see even a Chinese economist or politician is denying BRICS meaningfulness. That will get you into a bit of trouble with the official narrative in China. And if you say something good and unrealistic about BRICS, many smart Chinese audience will pick up and doubt your credibility. Uh, thinking that you are just a propaganda department of the Chinese government, so that's not good either. So it's very important for me to be truthful and honest with my audience and not lie about my thoughts just to say something that might please you. So I'm just going to throw out a few short points um, about BRICS and see how well you guys take it, okay? Here we go. BRICS. First, how do you define BRICS? BRICS is an economic and political alliance. Wait, no, not even an alliance. Okay, a discussion platform to navigate a Western dominated financial system that is becoming more chaotic and uncertain. It is a space that allow countries to come together and put forward ideas and plans on how to fix the economic problems that we are facing and also promote economic development and maintain healthy relationship, trade relationship, mainly among countries. In reality though, um, maybe they should change the name of BRICS to let's say anti-US led unipolar world order think tank, something like that. Maybe that's a more appropriate name because the formation of BRICS and driving motivation of BRICS has always been this unfair unipolar world order run by the Western elites. Of course, to talk about BRICS, we must talk about BRICS currency. Not likely to happen, no. The most it can do in the short term, I would say, is some kind of accounting method to facilitate trade between countries among nations partially outside of US dollar, partially, like I said. That's about it because everything is still kind of priced in US dollar and the Chinese currency renminbi is still piggybacking on top of US dollar. So it's unlikely to happen. My audience have to understand that the only countries right now in the world that has the economic strength, political stability to create and back a new type of currency within BRICS is China and Russia, okay? That's the only two countries. The other country's economic and political situation is just too unstable and fragile to be a meaningful contributor to this issue. So they can only kind of tack along. If you just look at all those countries in BRICS and also many of the countries in the global south who want to join BRICS, how many of them that you can say confidently, even your own country, okay, that they can survive a US-led color revolution. 
I really can say that I'm confident in many of them. To be an important contributor of such an important project of creating a new currency, it just has so many preconditions that most countries do not met. And it's often argued that China and Russia don't even meet those preconditions. And we are kind of force into a position to react to Americans' recent geopolitical decisions. The thing is, though, that the US-led financial system is under a lot of stress, okay? And also mismanagement is heading towards a collapse even without the challenge of something like BRICS or BRICS currency. Another core issue here is that China do not want to become a colonial power. I would say that's one of the biggest reasons. China do not want to replace the United States and run a financial colonial world order. Okay, I want to be very respectful here, okay? In my channel, there are many people's macro understanding of economics and geopolitics. It's at a primitive service level, okay? And there are people I can tell that understand the world at a much deeper level, more sophisticated. And I will say one of the more clear dividing line of my audience is that do you understand and accept we're living in a new colonial world? The US-led unipolar world is basically a global financial colonial empire. There's actually nothing wrong with that, but I mean, give me a second here. I still carry cash around because many of the local Chinese restaurant here, they only accept cash for obvious reasons, okay? If you look at this thing right here, and you truly understand what this is, how this thing works, it's really almost impossible to deny that financial colonial empire world that we're living in. You can't. And that the global economic system is a continuation and continued evolution of colonial economic system that has been designed and evolved, refined over the last 400, 500 years. And I need to say this again, even if my audience does not like me to say this, I said it very often in my comment section, I'm very sympathetic towards the United States and I respect the United States leadership over the world in the past few decades. And I will go as far as to say that majority of the Chinese top level economists and politicians, they also respect the US in a certain way because who in China with any respectful level of wisdom can really come out and say that China or Chinese would have done a better job than the United States. It's, it's difficult. Once you know how the entire global economic and political architecture works, it's, it's not easy to change. Not something that can be done over a few years or even over a few decades. And when you really enter that kind of change and revolution, evolution, there's a lot of dead end. China, Russia, the Soviet, you know, we might not end up somewhere that we want to just because we want something better. And I would say, and also many of my friends and also close relatives will say that today's China is incapable and also unwilling to step up to a leading position to replace the United States because it doesn't want to project power the same way as the United States, okay? And if China is unwilling to do it, it cannot really push forward a new international currency or to globalize the RMB, for example. If China wants to become a colonial power, however, you will see BRICS currency coming out much faster, okay? Again, this is a topic maybe for another day. Okay, now, will BRICS become a military? alliance unlikely no uh what is going to happen is well it is already happening um is that BRICS countries will come together and form military unions for a particular situation 
My audience have to understand that we are going through an era of great changes and also chaos. The line that separate military and economics will become very blurry. Okay, the United States will be very aggressive in maintaining its global position. So I can see temporary military alliance forming among BRIC states. So to conclude this short video, for BRICs to become efficient, to really solve the problems many global South countries face today, China must act like a colonial power. And since China currently does not want to act like a colonial power, then BRICs will be ineffective or let's say not progress at a pace some people look forward to. Let me put up a metaphor, okay? Um, imagine all these countries are sitting around this huge round table to eat dinner, okay? And the United States is like the cook, uh, your grandmother or something. And she cooks some good dishes and also cooks some bad dishes. And when you're sitting at the table, some countries in the global south always get served those bad dishes. And these countries can reach the good dishes because, you know, even if you stand up, your arm and your chopstick cannot reach those good dishes. So it's very annoying, especially when now that she's getting old and stubborn, she's cooking more bad dishes than good dishes. Now we have bricks. Countries get to choose to sit on a different table, right? So now the countries get to say that, well, United States, if you don't serve me the good dishes, I'm going to go and sit with, you know, China and Russia with bricks, right? But to the Chinese, which is kind of still sitting in the first table, which is getting served some good food and bad food since Chinese have long arms and we can reach more food and we are better with our chopsticks than the smaller countries, that we can still get a lot of good food. And the Chinese are like, you know, <laughs> we're not sure, okay? Uh, because if we move to another table, that means I have to do the cooking and Chinese GDP is more than the rest of the bricks combined. Who else is going to do the cooking, right? So the current Chinese attitude is more like, hey, grandmother, <laughs> United States, can you stop serving us those dumplings with nasty pickles in it? Uh, we don't want those. We, we just want those fresh fried spring rolls. Those are good, right? So my closing statement here, the pace of BRICS progression depends on China's motivation. And China's motivation depends on US strategy and pressure on China. If US provoke a, let's say, proxy war with China uh, through Taiwan or Philippines against China and use it as an excuse to kick China out of the global system, then China will be more likely to go all out with BRICS. There's an alternative approach uh, to many Chinese is more feasible. You know, China borders more countries than any other countries in this world. And if you put together China's population and the population that China borders directly, whether it's through land or through sea, the combined population accounts for more than 50%. I think it's even more than 60% of the entire world's population. OK, if China can figure out an economic and political strategy to interact prosperly with just these countries alone, it already offer a huge amount of stability and growth in the near future. And then China can use that model and duplicate and expand to other part of the world. Maybe that's a more feasible idea. So one small step at a time. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.